everyone, welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. We've got a couple of Christmas episodes for you, but first, before we start, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Captain Howdy's Black Bile. Alright. Power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! If you want the recipe, click the link above our heads. Today we're going to be talking about a beloved Christmas horror movie. Underrated in a way because it was shunned by critics all at the time, and it was pulled from the theaters early. Silent Night, Deadly Night, which came out in 1984. Directed by Charles E. Cellier Jr. It stars Robert Brian Wilson. Playing his boss in this is Britt Leach. And again, he's in a lot of 80s things. He's kind of like a mainstay in 80s bit part character. Yeah. He's in The Great Outdoors. <laughs> yeah. He's in The Last Starfighter. Weird Science. So all those 80s classics. Yeah. And we're bringing this next actor up just because he's in one of my favorite Star Trek episodes of all time. Charles Deerkopf. And he was in the Star Trek episode Wolf in the Fold. When Scotty gets accused of murdering several women. He's super noticeable in this because he's got a weird nose. Yeah, and you can tell too because like he wears that Santa outfit and yeah. it covers half his face. But you can just you see, can see that nose. And he's, yeah. I saw the nose and I'm like, that's the guy from Wolf in the Fold. Die. <laughs> Everybody die. They're all, <laughs> They're all dragging him off. Dude. The movie starts off with a uh, nice family drive. They're going to visit the grandpa of the family, sitting and staring. And he doesn't say anything and he doesn't do anything. But Billy's left with him. He, like, grabs Billy's arm and it's Christmas time. And do you know what Santa does to little boys that are bad? You don't always hear what Santa actually does to bad kids boys or yeah. bad bad girls right the grandpa's telling him well bad kids get punished scares the shit out of little billy so on the drive back home there's a car sort of on the on the shoulder and there's this santa guy kind of waving them down and this guy pulls out a gun and goes to rob them and he pulls the wife out and kind of rips her shirt open and just slits her throat poor little billy has been watching all this and the, the poor baby's in the back seat of the car the guy can't find Billy either. Yeah. Where are you, you little bastard? <laughs> <laughs> it sort of fast forwards three years into the future. And this poor Billy, he's in an orphanage, obviously because he's got no parents left anymore. <laughs> Who's running this orphanage is this mother superior, the real hard-ass bitch. He's traumatized by this guy in the Santa suit, right, that they ran into on the road. Santa's, like, in the orphanage, like, saying hi to kids, and they all make him sit on Santa's lap. He doesn't want to go. And he gets all freaked out, and he all punches Santa out. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, gives him the belt. Punishment is necessary. <laughs> yeah. Punishment is is good. That mother superior all ties him to the bed while he's having these nightmares. Ten years later, Billy is now grown up and he needs a job. And one of the head nuns gets Billy a job as a stock boy in a warehouse in a toy store. <laughs> Perfect 80s montage upbeat music playing. Oh yeah, it's and right it's, straight out of the beginning yeah. of a tacky 80s sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> Little his supervisor guys at the desk like <laughs> pouring whiskey and it's like styrofoam. God. He's all offering it to him like on the job, yeah. too. And it shows his boss gonna walk in and like... <laughs> It so happens that their Santa, who they have coming in to see the kids, hurt himself skiing so he can't come in. Make poor Billy put on the Santa outfit. Look how good he is with the kid. <laughs> and the, the boss is all... Yeah, he's all happy. <laughs> Seven o'clock, let's get shit face! <laughs> pulls out all his booze. Pulls out his liquor. And <laughs> Billy's two co-workers, they head off to the stock room and they get a little cozy. And she doesn't want to go the whole way. Billy is watching this. Billy starts flashing back to... The Santa on the roadside. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> and Billy grabs a string of Christmas lights, wraps them around the guy's neck, and 
just picks him up and hangs him <laughs> yeah. with brute force off the ground. Billy takes a box cutter, an X-Acto knife, and slits her. Oh. Belly button to chest bone. Billy goes on a killing spree, and killing his boss. Mr. Sims! <laughs> he puts an end to that too yeah. with a bow and arrow. <laughs> goes into this super tacky 80s looking house with all the wood <laughs> yeah. paneling, and a couple of great kills in that house. A couple of good toboggans kills. <laughs> yeah. Now the police are after him. They know that they're searching for a guy in a Santa costume. And they see the Santa character <laughs> approach the orphanage and pulls out his gun. Hold it right there! Don't you move! And he keeps going towards the kids and he unloads his gun in the back of the Santa Claus. <laughs> and uh, we find out he has gunned down the wrong person. A priest! Who was dressed as Santa, who did not respond to the cops' calls because he's deaf. deaf. <laughs> yeah. Keep watching if you want to find out what's going to happen with Billy and Mother Superior in the orphanage. One of the best things about this movie, and you can tell already I'm laughing, yeah. is the humor in yeah. this, right? It does just a good job of being a black comedy yeah. as it does as being a horror movie. The music is the same way where the horror-styled music really works, and it's really good, and it's really yeah. eerie, counteracted with this cheesy 80s happy Christmas music. Mm -hmm. It fits together really well. Yeah, and it does a great job of keeping you in the Christmas theme, right? Yeah. It feels just as much like a Christmas movie as it does a horror movie. Exactly. A string of Christmas lights around the guy's neck, right? Yeah. Well, it's Christmas lights. Yeah, it's, you know... Christmas time. It's a Christmas-themed kill, yeah. right? I like how they use all the creepy Christmas figurines and statues and stuff. It reminds me a lot like uh, Funhouse. Yeah, right? It's, yeah. And the use of lighting is really good in this movie. And the nighttime scenes in this look great. Like, the movie is cheesy, but it doesn't look cheap. It looks cheesy where it kind of needs to look cheesy. It knows what it is. Yeah, it knows yeah. what it is, yeah. yeah. If you haven't seen the uncut version, check that out. Yeah, it's a lot like My Bloody Valentine where the kills were all cut short. Yeah, and yeah. all some of the best kills were yeah. cut, right? This movie has great <laughs> kill scenes. Christmas lights... There's a box cutter. Good claw hammer. <laughs> yeah. No music, though. But <laughs> and you don't even see it, but you see the aftermath. It's just... Yeah. And those boxes. And actually, <laughs> that's the actor's IMDb picture. <laughs> Which is awesome, yeah. too. A nod to Texas Chainsaw, where he picks up a woman. Instead of putting her on, like, a meat hook, mm -hmm. he puts her on a bunch of antlers on this stuffed animal's head yeah. on the wall. It's psychological the kid was traumatized from a young age and then as he goes through these different stages in life it's these things that are triggering his mind right you know i think it's original in the way where they made the first half of the movie all based on the backstory and what triggers this guy to turn into a killer as far back as norman bates you know there's mental issues there which is causing him to kill people but the movie's not dedicated to showing how he got there. Right. In this movie, it's important to see that, yeah. too, the way they had set it all up. Because all right? these pieces fall perfectly into place to just make him snap. Yeah, and it's, it's really cool. It's something that yeah. you don't see very often in yeah. horror movies. And it makes you kind of sympathize with the killer as well. Get that fucking mother superior! <laughs> that bitch! Yeah. Damn bitch! <laughs> A great horror slasher movie for the holidays. Probably my favorite horror Christmas movie because it's the most Christmassy of them all. It's so much fun. It's just a fun movie. You chalk it up to movies like Return of the Living Dead, uh, where it's just from front to back. It's just like you're entertained. So if you like those later kind of Friday the 13th where the kills are getting inventive, My Bloody Valentine has oh, got yeah. a very good My Bloody Valentine vibe. Mm -hmm. Definitely check out Silent Night, Deadly Night. Punishment is absolute. <laughs> Punishment is necessary. Punishment is good. good. Especially when it's your liver. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>